Hey YouTube, how you doing? This is Dave here. It is a cold one in the garage. I apologize, I had my heater on a little while ago just to try to warm it up in here a little bit. But uh, today we got some goodies to show you guys. So I've been waiting for this for a little while. This is the DSX Tuning Flex Fuel Sensor Kit. Um, I got this uh, through, you know, um, from DSX Tuning through Shane Hines because he is my tuner. Uh, and um, we are working to get this thing ready to run on E85. It is the ZL1 version for that, so you can go up on DSX Tuning's website or Shane Hines' uh, website. Let me let me get this open for you guys so you can take a look at it. It is extremely straightforward uh, install. So, um, let me get this guy open here, sorry. You get to enjoy me uh, doing it, you know, opening up a bag, so. Very riveting entertainment. And this one is super simple though guys so it comes with the sensor for install and then like i had mentioned previously all this does is uh clips in to a, a pre-existing harness and um what you'll do is this plugs into your oh that's pretty slick they give you he even gives you the tool <laughs> to separate the fuel line that's pretty awesome but uh yeah very straightforward um it's set up stainless line hard bent and everything very very nicely done this comes in, your fuel's going this way, and then this goes into your existing fuel rail. So what I will do is hook this up to my LS9 fuel rail right here, and then this will get the fuel flex hose that was there before. And then this is then you just find your way into plugging this in. It's really, it's that simple. <laughs> so let's get the car open, let's get to it. Okay, guys, so I'm not sure how well you can see from here, but I'll hopefully uh, get a good view for you. You can see uh, there's my um, map sensor. This already has the DSX tuning um, auxiliary pump harness already put in. What I think I'm going to have to do, I'm just kind of looking at how this is put together. I may have to take this line off um, and route it over top of the coolant line here just to give myself enough room to shove the... Uh, flex fuel sensor in um, Because once I push this in it should lock in. I'm just worried. It might be a little close I may have to angle it up a little bit So there's plenty of play in here to get this piece up So I think that's what I'm gonna end up doing is actually rerouting this line Just get this out of the way here rerouting this line over top of here and that should give me enough room to uh, dress it uh, appropriately and um, What I'll do is I'm gonna shut the camera down just to kind of get that all hooked up Okay guys, so I have the uh, flex sensor installed here. It's a little bit of a kludge because of all the wiring I have laying around here, but it's about as good as it's going to get just because I have all the flex fuel stuff here. It just took a little bit of persuasion to get that um, hose on, but it fits well. I've got the clamp kind of holding it, you know, holding it in place back here where it originally was. Um, you have to find an accessible ignition pa uh, pack coil pack plug you just unplug this I did on um, driver side uh, cylinder uh, you know, fifth cylinder um, and I just unplugged that you put the jumper harness in you pl this is plugged to the sensor and then you you basically just plug the other end of the harness into what would have fed your coil pack and that's it and then all you got to do here is it's already has a pin on it and it, it'll um, I'll show you what I'm going to end up doing. It's very similar to what I did before, but I have this wiring that I ran along here. I'm just going to shove the wire through. I'll train it along here, run it down, and then over here is where the PCM is. So what I'll have to do is go in here, pull one of the plugs out. I don't know if I have to take the harness out or I'm not 100% sure what I got to do yet. I got to read the directions in that regard, but it shouldn't take particularly long to do. Just a little bit of work and then the sensor will be wired in, but it's uh, pretty straightforward, guys. So, um... More than likely, I have to get it into the harness. So um, it's going to take me a little bit of work, so I'm probably not going to record it. <laughs> but uh, stay tuned, and I'll give you the update once I get it done. Thanks. Hey, guys. How you doing? Uh, apologize for the beeping here, but uh, we're in the process of writing in the new uh, flex fuel calibration that uh, Shane sent me. Um, pretty straightforward. It's uh, enabling the sensor. He's tweaking a few things in the actual uh, calibration itself. So I'm in the process of writing the... Uh, uh, when you're, I'm, I'm just writing each one. I'm writing the trans tune again. I'm writing the um, fuel pump tune and everything. So the flex fuel sensor is in. 
So this is actually in the process of writing right now. What I'll do is before I fire it up, I'll take you out of the hood and I'll show you uh, what really needs to be done. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the directions are great. I am using the um, flex fuel sensor from DSX Tuning. I really like what the guy does, uh, Dave Steck. He does a very nice job of packaging everything. I made a, a bit of a mistake when I bought the, I bought the um, LSA style uh, for like a ZL1, I'm sorry, ZL1 style. Um, that would have been, that would have made sense had I gone with a standard ZL1 fuel rail um, or uh, a CTSV style fuel rail. Basically the one that feeds right from the back. Um, I actually have a ZL1 fuel rail, so mine's kind of funky how it how it looks. Um, so what I'll probably do is actually just change the fitting. I'll just buy another fitting. That was my mistake, not Dave's. So um, we're already done the engine calibration, and I can show you here. Sorry, just do a quick turn. Engine calibration's already done, and we're in the process of writing the uh, trans tune. It'll do the um, the final. Uh, right of the uh, fuel pump and then we'll be ready to rock and roll so we'll fire it up and if all goes well it will read somewhere between like seven to ten percent something like that ethanol content so um stay tuned and when this is done we'll fire her up and uh, we'll give you guys a little look-see all right guys so we're we're back up and running my fault again this is why you shouldn't really work on cars really really late at night because you do stupid shit so here we go you get in here we can take a look at it where is she ethanol content 9.4 percent ethanol fuel content interesting car's just cycling through it's relearning i'm just watching i don't have an ethanol content um line on here unfortunately but you can see 9.4 percent she's just going through and relearning everything from the tune but she looks good uh temperature's going up on the intake Things look pretty good guys so i think what we're gonna do is i'm gonna take it for a ride i'll give you an idea of what i think we're going with uh, you know I, I gotta talk to shane again now i've got this logging it says it's you know 9.4 percent roughly 99.4 percent that's a good thing uh it means the sensor's reading and i and I, I, my own stupidity didn't kill the sensor but while this is running let me come out um i think what i'll do is let me kill this let me just uh, hold on here So what I'm going to do is let me get out there and I'll do a little bit of, uh, give you guys a little bit more information here. What's going on. So let me just shut this log down. Boop. There we go. All right, let's get out of here. Uh, pew. All right. Whoa. All right. Calm down. <laughs> okay. So just to give you the underhood, very simple. It's very straightforward. The sensor, here's your E85 sensor, your flex fuel sensor. It is a very well put together kit. I apologize if you guys are having a little bit of trouble seeing it, but it's a simple Plug and play, like I said before, I, I have it tapped off the number five coil. The white wire is the wire that I ran over top, like I did on the, the rest of it. What I'm gonna do is put a loom on this, but it's the J1 connector. It's a little hard to see down here, but when you take that off, I originally said it was pin um, five. That is incorrect. The reason why I was wrong is because I bought, and, you know, and here's Dave's, you know directions and i'm not going to show you directions because that's not right for that's not cool uh you know you buy the kit you get the directions i'm just talking through what you need to do it, for the e67 pcm which is in the camaros the like the lsa camaros it's pin five it's the blue connector this is an e38 pcm so it's the top x1 i'm sorry the uh, top j1 connector but it's pin 40 or zero so my bad that was my mistake. That's why I wasn't getting a sensor signal. So she's in. She's good to go. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'll get in contact with Shane. We'll see what the next steps are. It's probably dry around, start filling it up with ethanol and, and start tuning, guys. All right. So stay tuned. Hey, guys. How you doing? We're back. Um, at this point, um, everything checks out fine. I took it for a quick ride. There was no point in um, doing any um, videoing of it just because I wanted to check, make sure all the lines were good. And... Um, it's reading 9%, 9.4% ethanol content, which is great. Um, I'm still getting the knock issues. That is what it is. I just checked the plugs. The plugs look actually really good. So um, at this point, I think I'm just making too much boost with the catalytic converters that are on there. I could go down a pulley size. You know, here's all my ethanol. I'm waiting for that. What I'm going to do is, um, now that the sensor's in there, 
and it's just going through learning learning right now. Um, what I will end up doing is um, more than likely um, drain the tank a bit. I'll just pull the line off, let it come out, and um, you know it'll be a bit of a mess, but I can it's a controlled mess. I've done it once before, so I'll just jack it up, get under there with a fairly large pan get the gas out of there and um then i'll siphon it over into my jug but um i want to get the ethanol in there because driving this on pump gas right now is not going to work i do have some parts coming that should hopefully uh remedy that um i should have done this in the first place but you know live and learn so uh at this point that's about it for today i'm sorry i wasn't able to get the ethanol in today i just ran out of light my vacation's over guys two awesome weeks of absolutely nothing to do but work on cars in the house so it was pretty awesome but uh, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you soon, guys. It's going to keep getting more and more uh, exciting here, and I hope to give uh, folks a nice big fat burnout video real soon. All right? Take care, and oh, also, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to have some updates on our next uh, two events uh, coming up in uh, this year. Uh, like I said before, the first one's in April, late April. Um, I believe it's April, I want to say April 28th, April 28th, I think, and uh, October um, 19th for the two dates. So, um, details to follow on that very shortly, guys. So, again, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you soon. Take care.